four months ago, uh, I had the pleasure of um, hearing Harriet uh, speak at the um, at an event called the Annual Steve Ashton Address. And uh, Steve was a friend of mine from university days, uh, who became a successful architect um, as a founding director of ARM, uh, who happened to be the architects who designed Port the building that uh, Harriet referred to in her introduction. And he was a keen rally competitor. Unfortunately, Steve died a bit over um, three years ago uh, from mesothelioma. And uh, one of the attributary reasons for that was um, hack soarings, uh, brake brake pads for his Datsun 1600 rally cab. Um, and hence, that's why there's an address in his honour. Harriet provided a fascinating presentation on um, shifting gear, design innovation in the Australian car, which was an exhibition curated by her, thank you, created by her and um, David Hulston, uh, which neatly combines Steve's passion for good design as well as his love of motorsport. Harriet subsequently agreed to make the same presentation to a club night of the Historic Rally Association. Um, and that was sort of fatal for me because she was then in a position to say, well, how about you coming and talking at my conference? So <laughs> here I am. Uh, look, the concept of what it's all about is car rallying has a, a small but passionate band of followers, I think it's fair to say, and the Rallypedia project is intended to provide a central repository for the history and records of car rallying in Victoria. Rallies have been part of the Australian uh, motorsport history for about 100 years. And uh, I think I'm correct that the Alpine Rally uh, is uh, the second oldest um, rally in the world, the oldest being Monte Carlo. And uh, it was started by, the Alpine was started by the RACB, Daryl's here representing RACB. Um, and uh, currently is run by the Historic Rally Association and 2021 will be the 100th anniversary of that event. And uh, I think even for events like the Alpine, um, the RACV has its own um, resources in history at the moment and um, and has some good information on those very early old pines, but uh, I'm not aware of any any sort of easy way to access the rest of the more recent history of the event. And by way of clarification, by car rallies I mean events that are competitive. Um, competitive rallies are scored by time, uh, obviously with the least time overall being the winner, but. Um, Modern rallies tend to involve not much navigation. There are some styles of events that have a bit of navigation, but the ones you see like where uh, cars driving fast there is uh, there's no navigation involved. It's just called pace notes. Whereas older rallies tended to have navigation as an integral part. Uh, but there were certainly events that were just navigation where the idea was just to go for a nice tour in the country uh, and that's, that's not part of the uh, agenda for the Rallypedia. The Rallypedia project was born, um, I thought, for a combination of four things. One was my 48 years of participation in car rally. Secondly, the curiosity of seeing some modest collations of information about in individual events, such as I have a booklet put together by Don Ellis in 2000 about the BP rally uh, that, that's, that's fascinating reading in the modern context. Also, many cases of talking to competitors and they have filing cabinets or boxes full of um, materials from their rally history at home and they don't know what to do with it and they're thinking of just all they can do is throw it out. I thought that's a, that's a waste of good, um, of good information and uh, it also equates with... Uh, the reference to CAMS being the conspiracy against motorsport is many years ago, K 
CAMS used to require that the organisers of car rallies um, provide a set of results to CAMS after the event. And uh, CAMS, many years ago, unfortunately, when they went through a move of office, I think it's when they moved to Camberwell, they had this uh, room full of old results and, and apparently someone said, what do we do with these? And no one had a sensible answer, so a skip was brought in and uh, it, it all disappeared. So um, it really a tragic loss of, uh, a loss of history. So um, there will be some of it recoverable for individual competitors and I wouldn't like to see it lost now. And the fourth thing is, um, Occasionally, you go to events where you hear the stories by competitors of their experiences, and there's some obviously very fascinating and humorous stories. And it's, uh, it would be nice to have a, a place where some of those are recorded. So, Rally Media aims to provide a ready means for rally enthusiasts to both access and, even more importantly, in the short term, contribute to the sports history. The initial intention, uh, I think my initial thoughts were inspired by what I saw on Wikipedia and so the plan was to use a wiki engine as the uh, principal software. It's intended that the, site, the, the content of the site will be principally provided by the rally community. Um, and I've already uh, got some information together but uh, the aim is not to become a secretary of uh, collating but to get a much wider range of people involved in contributing. Um, one potential problem in that, uh, probably overcomable within the wiki uh, software, was I didn't want it like normal Wikipedia where anyone can go and modify anything on the site. The intention was there would be moderators. The, the intention was that rally enthusiasts could put information on the site but not change what's there, and, and there would be a group of moderators just to uh, uh, double check that there wasn't inappropriate or irrelevant information finding its way onto the site. But a further major hurdle appeared when we really uh, thought about what the site should include. And as per the picture you're already seeing here, I think uh, graphics being videos, photos, audio files are really an important part of the history. It's a visual sport, um, sort of from a spectator point of view, but uh, it need, it, I think just text on paper wouldn't uh, get the enthusiasm we we're hoping to get, and, and wiki engines are not very good at. So we're told of handling uh, media files. Um, ultimately, uh, the students at RMIT, who I'll talk more about soon, decided on using WordPress as the primary website um, design tool. Uh, but there is a wiki structure in the background to handle uh, text. The project is, uh, is limited at this stage to uh, events cover, uh, conducted in Victoria, but it, it will also include uh, Australian and international events that had a, uh, that, that visited Victoria and who had competitive stages in Victoria. But I think the architecture will clearly be expandable if there are people in other states who like what we hopefully create and, uh, and want to run with it then the intention is that it uh, could be Australian wide. After registering, the, look, I'll talk about the first two years. I started this uh, a good two and a half years ago, and after registering the website and having it temporarily hosted on the Melbourne Uni Car Club website, I downloaded it again and set about uh, with the intention of how to learn how to program. But uh, while I thought I had the ability, and maybe I do, but maybe I'm kidding myself there to some degree, um, I'm one of those people in retirement who have um, filled up my life pretty quickly and I didn't actually make the time to uh, do all the research work to find out uh, 
how to drive the software. And the solution came from a, a chance discussion, um, a social function last Christmas with a, uh, a friend of the family who happens to be a professor of IT at RMIT. And she suggested that, uh, my, that we, I submit, that I document the intended project and submit it as a, uh, a possible project for RMIT IT students to do in the, uh, the final year of their course. So I prepared and lodged a submission in January and um, fortunately it was accepted. So it became the RMIT uh, project behind the scenes and in simple terms the brief was to prepare a website to document history but focus on the people and their stories. The content was intended to include text, scan documents, maps, photos, videos and audio files. Revision has now been made for other formats such as podcasts and uh, we're certainly uh, flexible in regard to whatever uh, content might be appropriate. The initial activity by the students was to prepare a business proposal uh, mimicking what we would be provided in a commercial situation. And, and one of my friends in the, uh, who works, uh, in fact the person who behind the Melbourne Uni Car Club website, he works in uh, a company that focuses on commercial research and development. He looked at the uh, business proposal and he said, that's better than most of the ones that, get, uh, that I've seen from commercially. So uh, they produced a, what appeared to be a good document. And they provided a timetable and an estimate of commercial cost. And that was uh, came to a total of 21600 based on $25 per hour. So. Uh, it's clearly been a valuable uh, contribution in more ways than one, and I'm very appreciative of RMIT and their students for taking on the project. The business proposal projected a sequence of what they called sprints uh, during the period of May to October. Uh, but in, um, in practice, progress after the, the business proposal was, was done was quite slow. The students were somewhat restricted and uh, they needed the, uh, the background posting a bit more organised than I managed to do. So nothing much happened initially um, and finally when they got onto it, uh, they revved up their, uh, their work and uh, my first sighting of this was last Friday. So it's all very recent and uh, Unfortunately, the term at RMIT finishes next Friday, and so um, the getting some further development is going to be a bit of a rush job, and I will obviously have to organise some resources to carry on with that uh, afterwards. But I think the uh, uh, the foundation has been well established by what they have done, and uh, and part of their project is they will be providing a manual so. That to assist us. Um, the students proposed that the primary web page have a background video like you've been distracted by here so uh, during the whole talk. Uh, I thought that was a terrific idea. It just, um, I felt that it, um, it, it really created a, a quite a sort of almost positive emotional response on first looking at the website and and would be good for encouraging um, enthusiasm to investigate further into the website. I thought I should briefly describe what each of the menu headings is intended to do. Um, the home page is, I think if we like, scroll down,
Okay. So the, the home page will, there, there was a sort of very brief note under about us, but the home page will provide um, uh, maybe just a bit more information about that. Then the intention is to add uh, another menu item in there that will be called Get Involved or, or Similar. And it will contain uh, the information on how people who visit the site can contribute and also a bit more uh, discussion of the structure of the site and will probably contain the links to um, photos, videos, audios and podcasts. Uh, what's current, there's a, there's a tab media, but we're, we're thinking at this stage that uh, the, the other tabs are more about topics, whereas media is really just a means of distributing information. It's not quite the right uh, topic to have there, or the right heading to have. So uh, that's still work in progress, but um, we want to make sure that people get to the information they're likely to be most interested in as quickly as possible. Uh, people section. We have uh, a, a list of, um, really a list of people. And the idea is, that the intention is this will maybe within the site be re-headed people and their stories because the, the, I think the most attractive thing for visitors to the site will not so much be the CV of the person but hopefully some of the numerous stories they've got to tell. So going to a person will give not only information about them, but uh, more, more hopefully stories that, uh, uh, that provide both entertainment and history. The events tab uh, has been intended for um, not so much to say this is where you find out about every event but it's divided up according to uh, categories. So there'll be each of the championships that have run. The students have suggested, as, a, as you can see here, that on the left is basically what's happening currently in the rally world, and on the right is more historical. So there will, and the attraction of doing that is there, is, there are series that no longer run, so it makes it clear or uh, more clear what's historical and what's, uh, what's current. And there will also be uh, links to standalone events down the bottom. So there'll be things such as the Alpine Rally, the BP Rallies, and international events that have visited Victoria, like the London to Sydney Marathons. Um, and if people, when people want to find a more obscure event, the idea is they will then go to years. And to make it simple, to keep it on one screen, we've divided into decades. And when you click on a decade, you get the individual year. And there's probably nothing in it at the moment. But when you click on the individual year, that's there's nothing there because it's not moving. But when you click on the year, the image you'll then go to a page that gives an overview of what happened in Victorian rallying in that year, what you know, regulatory changes, uh, what are the features of the year. You'll get the rally calendar for that year and a list of all the events. And if you click on an event, then you should get all the information associated with that event, whether it's regulations, route instructions, results, photos, stories, um, whatever we can now uh, get. The clubs tab is to provide a space for each club to make a contribution. Um, whether it does that by putting information on the website or just providing links to its own website, we're not really fussed about. Uh, but we're hopeful that within the clubs, um, if this generates sufficient enthusiasm for them to place their own information and contribute to the site via their club identity. And there will also down the bottom be uh, inactive clubs. So it's certainly an important club in the history of rallying in Victoria was the Light Car Club of Australia. And, uh, and 
Daryl, uh, I wasn't aware of this, Daryl was telling me before uh, we started this morning that the Leichhardt Club was actually formed out of a group of members of the RACB to continue running the Alpine Rally with the RACB, I think Daryl said, ran the first four and then the Leichhardt Club took over. Uh, and it, the Leichhardt Club went bust in uh, 20 or 30 years ago, I think, I think over real estate. Uh, but um, there's, there's still a lot of information uh, about that, so there's a, a place to collate that about clubs that no longer exist. Uh, there's also a tab labelled cars, of which there's nothing there yet because we've struggled on just how to identify cars because particularly in rallying car, the term car tends to be a bit of a flexible concept because if you have a car and you have a big accent like a rollover, well, a lot of people say, well, I'll just reshell the car, which means it's obviously a different car, but with all the same stuff in it. But the, the, there are certainly individual cars of note in the sport, so the intention is to, uh, is to include information about them under that thing. The remaining tabs of media news and stories are, are work in progress and, and that will change over the next week. Um, stories may remain a menu item because it's uh, to me a key part of what the site's going to provide. Uh, but if, if it is, it will go towards the left hand end as a higher, effectively a higher priority. Uh, finally, we will be including a menu tab labelled resources or something similar to that which will provide links to uh, other websites that have information and an opportunity for people who publish books to advertise uh, their books and, uh, and any other external information. After, um, now I'll just talk about a few of the technical challenges and it even includes some things that I don't fully understand but I, I thought it might be just interesting to see how the um, some of the issues the students at RMIT faced and what they did to resolve. Uh, after considering from my perspective had to sort out the hosting and, uh, and I consulted through the person in the Historic Rally Association who runs our website and he recommended a hosting firm called Digital Pacific and we're using a package they provide that includes WordPress and the WordPress updates as part of the hosting package. So we shouldn't have to sort of separately keep uh, WordPress up to date. And that was implemented in August. The subsequent issues identified by the RMIT students was they said that um, CSS files were overriding each other, causing third party plugins to not display correctly. That's good for those who have IT. <laughs> the solution was to purchase uh, a thing called Elementor Pro and use their suite of tools. Initial development was done using the free version, but it became evident the pro version was necessary, and that was purchased yesterday. As I said, work in progress. Uh, they needed a user registration and form building system, which, uh, again, Elementor Pro uh, should provide the solution for that. Uh, they, were, they were not clear how to structure unsorted data. Uh, that's been, I think, adequately resolved really by just discussions between our group and their group about what we're trying to achieve and uh, I think they can now see the types of categories of data we want, uh, but um, it's up to them they'll be the ones initially to decide the underlying structure of the website as to where the actual data is. And, uh, and I think in, in one sense, the, the location of the data doesn't matter, it's just the links back to the, the screens. It's, it's getting, getting the linking structure right is the important aspect. Uh, they noted WordPress media well, there, there are storage, media storage limitations, and um, we've taken initial hosting with 25 gigabytes of data, and they said that's equivalent to about 12,000 web pages. So 
So space initially doesn't seem a problem, but um, but videos and audios take a lot of space. So what they recommended is that we host thank you, we host uh, videos on YouTube <coughs> and audio files on SoundCloud, and uh, just use a link to those sources. And in that way, our storage um, should be uh, should last for a few years. But obviously, there's the option to upgrade for a um, that's um, the option to upgrade for additional cost. And the last one was keeping the website responsive and viewable on all devices. And they said that Elementor Pro also offers a solution using what they call a bootstrap framework. And what that does is when you log in on a mobile phone, it changes the structure of the display of the website so it doesn't look like that. It's the same information, but it's automatically restructured to work on mobile phone screen. So that seemed quite a good solution. Now my final heading is where to from here. And the project's still in its infancy and the tight time frame between first seeing the website and the RMIT end of year is unfortunate. However, I think we'll get there and I thank the four students who are Terry, Stephen, Yana and CJ for an excellent outcome so far. It's now up to me and the founding committee to get the project up and running. I'd also like to thank the founding committee uh, and I'm hoping they'll all be moderators as well for their enthusiasm. Uh, it includes Bob Watson and Dinder Officer who are both former Australian Rally Championships. Uh, Paul Golly Mollison and John Douch, who are both the two of the main, uh, the two main rally photographers in Victoria. Uh, Ken Cusack and John Wilkinson, who are past photographers. Uh, David Lambie, James Nixon, Joel Wall, Peter Olson, and Ross Reynolds. And um, thank you, Harriet, for giving me the opportunity to talk thank to you so. about rally TV. of 
Yeah, like if it, if it goes into this, do we lose the do we lose the, the, the information and, and how how is like I don't know anything about Elementor Pro or CSS files or anything like that. Yeah, so are we are we run the risk of this becoming something that we can't access in future. I'm not sure. If I guess I don't know the answer. To that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a fair comment, and I think it's going to be a combination of two things. I suspect the the technology will always be there to maintain it, but it's really uh, whether the level of interest persists when the, the current people who are active in sort of 20 or 30 years' time when they've all uh, you know, breached the retirement home or beyond stage, um, will there be the interest to keep going with it? And that depends on the younger generation. And like, uh, like is generally the case in society, is the younger generation doesn't seem need clubs to associate with each other out of their interest. They have social media. So the whole concept of clubs is, um, is challenging uh, from a long-term perspective. And, and we're in a, and I was, <laughs> I was also really uh, taken by the comment about the conspiracy against motorsport because I haven't heard that one before, but one of the battles we're having at the moment is because of safety rules, the CAMS board has dictated that from next year, every competitor in a rally that is uh, timed to, to less than a minute uh, has to wear frontal head restraints. And for it, so that brings the question of how, how will someone ever start in rally? Because if you, by the time you get to wear a frontal head restraint, you need a proper rally seat, you need a six point harness, you need a thousand dollar helmet, you need a five hundred dollar head restraint, you're up for you know, four or five thousand dollars just to even step into a car to try it. So they're killing the, the introductory level of motor of motorsport is potentially will be killed or rally will be killed by this. And so I, I'll use that because we really feel like the board has a conspiracy against introductory rally because they don't understand the consequences of what they're saying. So we're going to lose their acting in January the 1st, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> yes, and then, then they obviously knew that we were going to use that because you know, I got a email a week ago, they're changing their name to Motorsport Australia. Yeah. Positioning themselves to be the people. Yeah. Well, thank, you. thank you very much, David.